Matt Davis, who is the, a co-director of Davis and Davis, uh, director of Di Davis and Davis Architecture, uh, Architects, sorry. Um, he is an architect and urban designer and a strong advocate for the value of design in the planning and development sectors. Matt is a member of design review panels in South Australia and New South Wales and, the, and of the inaugural SA State Planning Commission. This, um, this house actually won an award within the uh, South Australian Institute of Architecture Awards uh, for alterations and additions. So please welcome Matt Cole. Housing in Australia is a bit of a mess, I think. It's become a kind of lifestyle commodity fueled by TV celebrity and, and, uh, and our appetite for new and shiny things. And, I was thinking, we work, we've been working on this house, some form or another, for about 11 years, and the average Australians renovate their kitchens and bathrooms more often than that, so it's, it's a bit shocking. Um, so in some respects, it's, it's as much about an attitude about what we don't build as what we do build, or the way we go about building things. So this idea of housing as a lifestyle commodity um, fueled by fashion and, and shiny surfaces hasn't always been that way. Um, you know, houses have been uh, really up to a few decades ago much more utilitarian about providing good places for our families to live um, in an affordable and kind of equitable way. And Colonel Light Gardens um, was one of those examples where planning and design came together to set out this kind of model garden suburb. And it's renowned as Australia's best garden suburb built in the um, 20s and 30s. And by garden suburb, we're really talking about this kind of uh, integration of landscape and that, that healthy, comfortable lifestyle for, for workers. So a key part of that was the provision of these um, workers' bungalows, this uh, state bank building program, so South Australia's first public housing program, where there's about a thousand of these standardised housing types, very modest little bungalows, 14 different types that were built, you know, 50 times each or whatever. Um, and that has, in a sense, given that, that, in combination with the planning of Colonel Light Gardens, given it that value that is reflected in its state heritage status now. So the Bowden Baker House is on Springbank Road. It's part of that state heritage area. It's one of those uh, state bank bungalow typologies sitting on a pretty busy road next to the vets. Um, you can see there one of, one of those standard types. So it's about 90 odd years old. And when we got to first start looking at it, it had clearly seen better days. Um, this dim lighting is doing it um, a favour, actually. It was pretty horrific. Really, really, really badly cracked. It's got the curse of that Clapham clay in the foothills there where everything just moves and, and the building had really suffered. But also, this is the back of the house facing north out to the garden, or not facing north out, out to the garden. Very utilitarian, laundries, kitchens, you know, where today we might be wanting to relate to the garden. So there you see the kind of back blank frontage. So the brief was pretty simple. It was about building a house that, was, um, that valued the old house, didn't get rid of it, but reflected contemporary needs. It's very much about the personalities of Jane and Simon. Simple things that we often talk about, light, connection to garden, good planning, that kind of stuff, um, and a, a shared appreciation of quality. So there wasn't really this kind of ex explicit sustainability agenda, but amongst us, we kind of shared this attitude towards doing things well, you know, build it once and, and build it for the long haul, not, the, not for that short flip kind of mentality. So the first concept was actually to not build anything new at all, but it was to try and make that little cellular house work really hard, treat it more like an apartment with flexible, beautiful spaces that inter, you know, interconnect and relate to each other and open up the back to the north. Um, you see the sketch on the bottom there, that was like 2008. 
And things happen, GFC comes along, people change their minds, they get nervous, they think, oh, maybe it's a bit too radical to not build anything. So in time, the client's brief changed a little bit and they said, well, we probably need to build a bit, not just make this one nice. Um, but this process of working with them crystallised a batch of ideas. Jane is um, one of Adelaide's best jewellers, runs Zoo Design, some of her work on the left there. And we never really looked at her work and said, oh, we must do a house that's like Jane's jewellery. But her attitude towards jewellery is similar to what I've described. It's, a, it's not about costume jewellery to make you look pretty and flick it. It's about investing in a piece that will last a lifetime. Um, that's meant to be the plan of, the, of what we built, not the bits that we demolished. But anyway, bear with me. Um, I'm going to just step you through. So fundamentally, it was about making the old house work harder, give it another 90 years of life. So you step into the house and you look right through the threshold from the old to the new and to the big tree at the back. Um, this was the cellular living room and kitchen. We opened that up to the near perfect north orientation. We poured a slab in there to try and deal with that horrifically hot or cold old uninsulated brick houses. So it becomes very thermally stable. This little courtyard between the old and the new allows the northern sun into the old house, south light into the new part of the house and opens up the guts of it to let the, the gully breezes come through and flush it out at night. These are really simple principles and after the last four presentations, it's almost embarrassing to talk about how simple they are and yet they're not endemic in the way we build houses in Australia. So there's still work to be done. Um, so this is the dining room, the courtyard on the left and then through to the kitchen, thank you. Uh, you see the, the wall on the left, it's very much about kind of, again, simple things, solid on the east and the west, opening up to the north and so on. This is, these are insulated masonry walls, the, thermal, uh, the concrete slab with um, hydronic heating. Um, it's, they have got air conditioning, but it's, inc it's incredibly thermally stable and the house really performs beautifully and they, they, do, they barely use the air conditioning. They kind of regret putting it in. Um, kitchen, again, it's not the shiny two-pack kind of glossy stuff. It's about timber, stainless steel. Like Jane's jewellery, it gets better with time and with wear and with age and it will last. They won't replace that in seven years. It'll be there for 30, thanks. Bathrooms are similar. They're not shiny. They are pretty, but they're not you know, fancy. They're just very simple, very durable, um, low maintenance and so on. And as we come out to the back, there's this big, deep, broad, north-facing veranda. Um, it's slightly elevated over the foothills looking down and you're sitting about a metre above the ground. You have this beautiful outlook to the north um, and these deep frames that in a way kind of highlight the landscape. You see as the course of the time, the day and the night changes, um, the shading function during the day then kind of reverses and it becomes a very transparent, beautiful house. Um, I think I've said beautiful about five times. I think it's important in that while sustainability is often a technical thing, it's also a human thing and housing is very much about the way people relate to it and the longevity of housing is much about people wanting to live there and loving living there as the energy bill, which is kind of low too, by the way. Um, another view at night, next. Around to the north, that's it. Thanks very much.